Hi all, we are going to deal with design of machine elements 2, module 3. Uh, myself, uh, Dr. Nivish George from Department of Mechanical Engineering, Rajagiri School of Engineering and Technology. Now, coming to the module 3, we will be primarily focusing on design of gear systems which are being most commonly used and the most simplest of the gear types is per gear design is being uh, detailed detailed in this module now what are the different uh, profiles of the gear tooth which are being commonly used the loss of gearing also the major equations associated with the design of the gear system such as the Lewis equation as well as the wear load equation which are most commonly used for the design of the gear systems now these are the contents that we are going to deal with and we will be solving some of the problems so basically this module is classified into or divided into five different uh, sets of uh, uh, lectures uh, and we will start with the uh, first part now now coming to the different mechanical drives which are being uh, used in the current scenario now first we need to understand what are the different what do you mean by a mechanical drive and what are the different types of drives which are being commonly used now you can see a mechanical drive is defined as a mechanism which is intended to transmit mechanical power over a certain distance usually involving a change in speed and torque now why do you really require this now what are the needs now you can see that it is to vary the torque and speed of engine or motor so you need to adjust or we need to change the engine speed or torque or in some applications you may have some variable speed requirements which you can uh, definitely see in the case of an automobile so first gear second gear and third gear you can see the torque requirement as well as the velocity requirements are different and also the third option the third need is to uh, create linear motions now why do you want to create linear motions so obviously you can see in the rack and pinion arrangement the rotary motion need to be converted into a linear motion now which is obtained through these uh, drive systems now again if you see the classification of the mechanical drives basically mechanical drives are classified onto friction as well as engagement now under the friction you can see the friction drives usually utilizes the frictional force in order to transmit the power so you can see under the frictional uh, force drive systems you can you may have belt as well as drop drop drive where the power is usually transmitted using the frictional force now again another classification is the engagement positive engagement where you can see the gear and chain systems are classified under positive engagement systems now you can see one of the gear is going to be engaged with the other gear or the chain sprockets are engaged with the chains so that is why it comes under the classification engagement now in that uh, in module 3 we will be focusing on gear drive systems now what do you mean by these gears now gears are defined as toothed wheels or multi lobed cams which you can see over here you can see the tooths on the surface or the periphery of a uh, circular disc so gears are defined as toothed wheels or multi lobed cams which transmit power and motion it is going to transmit power and motion from one shaft to another by means of successive engagement of teeth now here you can see these teeth is going to engage into these gaps so you can see there is a space in between the two teeth and the other gear is going to engage into this tooth space now what are the advantages of this gear drive system now it is a positive drive system and the velocity ratio remains a constant which you cannot see in many of the other drives and uh, the center distance is small which results in compact construction so you can have a very compact construction using this gear drive system now this can transmit very large power as you can see there is no slip during this process 
and since uh, and you can see that since you don't have any power loss uh, it is having very high efficiency of the range of 98 percentage and you can see by varying the diameter of the uh, pitch circle you can have a wide range of velocity ratio that is possible with these gear drives now these are the various advantages associated with these gear drives you can have a positive drive you can have a very compact construction it can transmit very large amount of power high efficiency due to the limit uh, due to the uh, uh, you can see there is no slip associated with this and a wide range of velocity ratio is possible with this drive systems going to discuss about the different types of gears which are being commonly used in different applications now there are basically four different types uh, the first among that is the spur gear now you can see this represents a spur gear and uh, where they are being used is the when you have when you need to transmit power between two parallel shafts you will go by the spur gear systems now you can see one shaft will be at this location and the other shaft will be at this location now you can see it is used to transmit power between two parallel shafts now if you look from the uh, side view you have a look from the side view and you draw the side view you can clearly see that you are having teeths which are cut parallel to the axis of the shaft now this is the speciality of the spur gear so when you look from the side view you can see you will be having a rectangular section over which you can see the teeth are cut parallel to the axis of the shaft now if you look from the uh, front view you look from the front view now the teeth profile will be having an involute profile which you can see clearly uh, from the uh, animation so you will be having an involute profile now this involute profile is through the entire depth of the uh tooth now that is the case of a spur gear now when it comes to a helical gear you can see again power is being transmitted between two parallel shafts now if you take the two axes you can see power is be transmitted between two parallel shafts now what is the difference again you have a look from the side view again you draw the section you can clearly see that you will get a rectangular section and the teeth which are cut on the periphery are inclined to the axis of the shaft that is the difference between a helical gear and a spur gear in the spur gear you can see the teeth are cut parallel to the axis of the shaft whereas in a helical gear you can see teeth are cut inclined to the axis of the shaft now what is the other difference between these two now you can see Uh, both are having involute system but you can see as the uh, teeth are cut inclined the involute the involute shape is maintained along the plane perpendicular to the uh, uh, teeth plane perpendicular to the teeth for a helical gear now it, when it comes to the spur gear you can clearly see that the entire width of the teeth are coming or it is getting in co into contact with the teeth space of the next gear now this can induce a large amount of noise while in operation now when it comes to a helical gear initially only a point comes in contact which will be further extended downwards which reduces the noise of the helical gear system now coming to the third type of gear system you can see it is called as the bevel gear system now where you can see that the axis of the shaft are perpendicular to each other you can see both axis are perpendicular and you can see if you are extending this now these are going to intersect now bevel gears are used to transmit power between two perpendicular shafts which are intersecting and you can see that it need not be always perpendicular it can be at some angle which is below 90 or some angle above 90 now the next type of gear is the worm gear now what is the difference between a bevel gear and a worm gear again you can see if you draw the axis of the two gears you can see both are perpendicular 
but they are never going to intersect so these are the different applications of the different gears which we have studied now if you take the spur gear and helical gear you can see the basic application is for the speed reduction now you can obtain a speed reduction of 6 is to 1 for both spur as well as helical gear but that can be extended up to 10 is to 1 now if you take the bevel gear system usually we will go for a gear reduction of 1 is to 1 and that can be further extended to 3 is to 1 now if you go for a worm gear you are going to have a high velocity reduction usually used is 60 is to 1 and that can be extended to 100 is to 1 so you are going to have a very high velocity reduction for the worm gear system that is the speciality of this worm gear system we are going to the law of gearing now what do you mean by this law of gearing now in order to obtain a constant velocity ratio you need to satisfy uh, the law of gearing now the law of gearing states that the common normal to the tooth profile at the point of contact at the point of contact should always pass through a fixed point which is called as the pitch point in order to obtain a constant velocity ratio so this should always pass through a fixed point again that is named as pitch point now what does this uh, uh, definition states we will uh, also analyze uh, from the figure point of view now you can see uh, you are having two rotating members uh, whose centers are fixed at O1 and O2 and the first gear is rotating at an angular velocity of omega 1 and the second gear at an angular velocity of omega 2 which you can clearly see from the figure and on the periphery they have shown two, two, two teeth which are being on the engaged position and the point of contact is represented as C now you can draw a line at the point of contact and what does the uh, law of gearing states now if you draw the common normal you can draw a normal to this uh, point line of contact and you can see you are going to get a line CD for the first gear and you are going to get a second line CF for the second gear now that is a common normal to the tooth profile at the point of contact C which is shown in the figure and what they state is that this should always pass through a fixed point which is given as p in the figure now this is always going to pass through a fixed point which is called as p also called as pitch point now this is essentially required in order to obtain a constant velocity ratio that is what the law of gearing states now you can go through the derivation which is given in bandari because as our syllabus suggests that it a, only a review is required in uh, the law of gearing now, once you derive based on the uh, trigonometry as well as the uh, all the relationships uh, using the principles of similar triangles, you can see that you will be obtaining a relationship. The velocity ratio omega 1 by omega 2 is equal to O2P by O1P. And also you can see that O1P plus O2P is equal to O1O2. Now, O1P is the center distance of the first gear. Uh, from the center of the gear to the pitch point and O2 represents the center of the second gear and O2P represents the distance of the center of the second gear to the pitch point. Now this relationship clearly suggests that the P should be a fixed point which is termed as the pitch point. Now that is what the law of gearing states. Now you may please go through the derivation which is given in the Bandari textbook. Now we will see how this is going to happen. I will be providing an animation for the same which you may see in the next slide. Now whatever I have stated from the previous slide which you can see uh, and better understand using this uh, animation which is being provided. Now you can see uh, always the point of contact as it proceeds the rotation you can see the point of contact moves.
and this red line it represents the common normal to the point of contact this red line represents the common normal to the point of contact and you can see the point of contact as it moves you can see it proceeds from one side to the other side and this always passes through the same line and it always pass through a common point which is called as the pitch point which is as shown in the figure you can have a fixed point which is called as a pitch point so this represents the this clearly shows the law of gearing you can see the line is not changing it always pass through a common point which is called as a pitch point i hope you have understood what do you mean by the law of gearing and uh, what what does it convey okay and now you can see it actually only happens this happens when you have a particular profile for the teeth now you can see you are having a particular profile for the teeth now what are those profiles that is required in order to satisfy the law of gearing i have suggested you can have two profiles to satisfy the law of gearing so one is the involute uh, tooth profile and the other one is cycloidal tooth profile so these are the two types of tooth profiles which are going to satisfy the law of gearing now what are they now assuming assume that you are having a round road and over which you have one wound uh, a string wound a string and you can see it is at this location now you open this you open this when you open this you can see it is going to trace a path okay so assume the case you are having a circular road on which you are uh, you have uh, wound a string over this circular road now you extend the string at uh, one location or at the start of the uh, unwinding stage and you trace a path you keep on uh, un un unwinding this uh, a string you can see the string is going to trace a path now that path is called as an involute curve now if your tooth is going to have that particular type of uh, profile that particular type of uh, profile on the tooth then it is called as an involute tooth profile now the next type is called as a cycloid profile okay now assume this uh, blue uh, blue circle represents the gener generating circle and you are having uh, some kind of uh, base uh, assume that you are having a flat uh, base and you fix a point on the uh, periphery of the uh, circle okay you fix uh, one o one o as a line from the center uh, one you are going to join a line o and you keep that o point as a fixed point okay you trace the path which is followed by this point o as the generating circle proceeds in this direction is it clear now you can see you are having a diameter which is marked as 1 o and you are fixing this point o you are going to trace the path which is followed by this o now you can see you are going to rotate the generating circle in one direction and you can see this point is going to trace some path right you can see as it rotates you can see it is going to trace some path now this path which is being traced by this uh, uh, point is called as cycloidal path now instead of this a straight line if you are if you are allowing this circle to rotate on some other base circle on the surface of the base circle it is called as epicycloid and if uh, this circle is allowed to rotate inside some uh, circle it is called as hypocycloidal tooth profile so you are going to have two uh, types of cycloidal tooth profile okay now it is these two profiles that is going to satisfy the law of gearing now that is that is why we see commonly certain tooth profiles in the gear systems now again you are having certain advantages for this involute tooth profile as well as for the cycloidal tooth profile okay now uh, there are some drawbacks associated with the cycloidal tooth profile as you can see the surface of this profile 
it is very difficult to manufacture these kind of profiles onto the surface of the gear tooth. But when you compare the performance of these two tooth profiles, you can see cycloidal tooth profile uh, provides a better perform uh, provides a better performance in comparison to the involute profile. But due to the severe difficulty in manufacturing this profile onto the surface of the gear tooth, it, we always usually go by the involute tooth profile, which is easier to manufacture in almost all the machines. You have the milling machines, you, you can use the lathe machines, you can use different kinds of machines to manufacture this involute tooth profile. So the uh, major gear terminologies that are being used uh, uh, while we are going to design for these uh, gears. Now you can see so many no, names uh, which are being labeled uh, or uh, different terminologies which are being labeled on the figure. You will see one by one. Okay. Uh, you assume the case uh, you are having two gears which are being uh, rotating at certain uh, velocity ratio which is being rotated at the, some the velocity ratio. Now, uh, you have, uh, you can see that you will be having two gears. So, one will be one gear like this and the other one will be somewhat larger in size. Uh, not perfect in drawing as I am using a mouse for this. Now, you can see that you are having two mating gears. Now, one among them, if it is smaller, it is called as pinion. And the larger one among these two mating gears, it is called as a gear. Okay, so you are having a pinion, you call that uh, uh, for a small gear, you call them as a pinion and for the larger among the two mating gears, you call it as a gear. Now, uh, the next definition which you are going to have is the velocity ratio, which is represented as I. Now, what is I? Now, assume the case you are having a driving gear and a driven gear and the driving gear is rotating at an angular velocity of omega 1 and the driven gear is uh, rotating at a velocity of omega 2. Now, if you are taking the ratio omega 1 divided by omega 2, the ratio of angular velocity of the driving gear to the angular velocity of the driven gear is called as velocity ratio and it is given as I. Now, the next definition is uh, transmission ratio I dash which is represented as I dash. Now, assume the case you are having a series of gears which are being mounted. Assume that you are having four number of gears and you are having a gear train. And the velocity of the driving gear is considered as omega 1 and the velocity of the idler gears are considered as omega 2 and omega 3 and the velocity of the driven gear is assumed to be omega 4. And if you take the ratio, the velocity, angular velocity of the driving gear to the angular velocity of the driven gear, which is the last gear and it is given as omega 4. Now, if you take the velocity ratio, the angular speed or ratio of these two gears, then it is called as I dash, it is called as transmission ratio. Now, the next one is pitch cylinder, pitch cylinder. Now, you know that when two gears are rotating, you know the periphery is having uh, multi-lobed cams or it is uh, toothed structures. Now, you cannot consider that as a perfect cylinder. Okay. Now, these two gears are going to transmit some motion. Now, instead of assuming these as gears, you consider these two as two pairs of some imaginary cylinders. Now, if these two imaginary cylinders are going to transmit the same motion that any two gears are in mesh are going to transmit, then these cylinders are called as pitch cylinders. So, you are having gears which is going to transmit some motion and you can see it is not a perfect cylinder or a perfect circle. Now, corresponding to that gears in mesh, if the same motion is being transmitted by two circular cylinders, then these two imaginary cylinders are called as pitch cylinders. Okay, and the diameter of these uh, cylinders are called as pitch circle diameter. Pitch circle diameter. Now, the last one is the pitch point. Okay, now the point on line of senders of two gears. So, line of senders of two gears. Assume that you are having this as a sender. 
and you are connecting these two senders okay you are connecting these two senders the point on a line of senders of two gears so you can have a line which is connecting the two senders okay at which two pitch circles of the mating gears are tangent to each other okay now if you draw a common tangent okay you can see the two pitch circles of mating gears are tangent to each other now this point represents the pitch point now these are the terminologies which are defined in the present slide now we will see the next terminologies uh, so the first terminology is a circular pitch what do you mean by the circular pitch now you can see it is the distance measured along the pitch circle now you can clearly see this dotted line represents the pitch circle okay this clearly represents the pitch circle now the distance which is measured along the pitch circle from a point on one tip to the same point on the adjacent t and the distance between these two measured along the pitch circle is called as circular pitch and you can see that is being labeled here as circular pitch okay and the angle subtended by this circular pitch at the center of the gear tooth is called as pitch angle it is called as pitch angle so if you measure the distance along the pitch circle from one point of t to the adjacent point uh, to the uh, uh, same point on the adjacent t and that distance is called a circular pitch and the angle subtended by this circular pitch at the center of the gear is called as pitch angle now you can see the entire circumference is given as pi d okay pi d and if you have z number of teeth if you divide that by pi d divided by z now that represents the circular pitch and the same equation is given in equation 12.1a in the data book you may please refer to these equations which are given in data book now the angle subtended by the circular pitch at the center of the pitch circle is called as pitch angle now going to the next uh, terminology is the diametral pitch diametral pitch so it is the ratio of number of teeth to the pitch circle diameter so it directly gives you the relationship the diametral pitch capital p is equal to the ratio of number of teeth which is z to the pitch circle diameter which is represented as small d and this equation is given in equation 12.1b in the data book now what do you mean by a module okay now the ratio of pitch circle diameter in millimeter to the number of teeth to the number of teeth is defined as module again this equation is given in data book equation 12.1b so ratio of the pitch circle now it is always necessary that you should have a, a common module or the same value of module between the two engaging gears okay that is also another condition now we will see what are the other definitions coming up you can see addendum circle it is passing through the tip of the teeth it is a circle passing through the tip of the teeth okay and addendum it is a radial distance between the pitch circle and the addendum circle didendum or root circle circle passing through the roots of the teeth see this figure you can clearly see that now addendum circle is given by this outermost circle outermost circle and you can see it passes through the tip of the teeth tip of the teeth and didendum is the circle which is passing through the root of the teeth passing through the root of the teeth so that also you can see okay now what do you mean by addendum it is the radial distance it is the radial distance between the addendum circle and the pitch circle and what do you mean by didendum it is the radial uh, radial uh, radial distance uh, of the didendum from the pitch circle so you can see clearly now this represents the pitch circle this represents the pitch circle
consider the case you are having uh, uh, the full depth of uh, teeth clearance top land bottom land tooth thickness tooth space and the distance so these are some of the other terminologies which we need to address now so far we have discussed del dentum now what do you mean by full depth of the teeth okay so radial distance along the radius it is the radial distance from the dentum circle to the addendum circle that is termed as full depth of teeth full depth of teeth but again you can see it is a sum of addendum and the dentum okay now what do you mean by clearance it is the difference between the addendum and dentum and it is being shown over here this is represented as clearance it is the difference between the addendum and the dentum okay now what are the other terminologies you are having the terminologies which is called as top land and bottom land what do you mean by that top land is the top space or the top surface of the tooth okay uh, along the entire face width if you see the face width this represents the face face width and uh, the surface of the tooth okay is called as the top land and the uh, surface of the, the tooth space is called as the bottom land bottom land which is represented over here now you can see two more terminologies uh, other one is called as tooth thickness it is the width of the tooth measured along the pitch circle it is called as tooth thickness and width of the space which is measured along the pitch circle is it is defined as tooth space tooth space and always the center distance between the two gears it is called as the center distance okay so these are the terminologies which are which need to be addressed uh, from the previous slide now uh, we will see uh, some more terminologies uh, which are associated with again uh, these gear drives now uh, Uh, there are some of the common terminologies uh, which need to be used are the base circle line of action pressure angle backlash working depth face flank so i feel this face flank these all you can understand uh, from the definitions which are uh, from the definition itself and you can refer to the previous figures okay now there are, these are some of the terminologies which i would like to address the arc of contact the arc of approach arc of recess uh the contact ratio okay uh face width face width and profile also you can understand by the definition itself so the length of the tooth measured parallel to the axis of gear curve formed by the face and flank of the tooth again you can you could have seen that you have studied about both involute and uh, uh, uh cycloidal profile okay now the remaining terminologies which are addressed in this slide uh, can be addressed or can be explained with the help of figure okay which is shown in the next slide now uh, uh, the first definition which we are going to look is the base circle base circle so again you can see uh, a base circle uh, it is an imaginary circle from which the involute curve from which the involute curve of the tooth profile is generated okay so i hope you remember the explanation which was given for an involute curve okay so you will be having a uh, you will be having a base circle on which you will have string which will be wounded and you can see slowly you will be unwounding the string and that is going to trace a path which is called as the uh, involute path now this base circle from which you are starting the involute profile is called as base circle okay it is an imaginary circle from which you cannot see an base circle in a gear but it is only an imaginary circle from which the involute curve of the tooth profile is generated now you can see this solid line circle over here represents the base circle of the first gear and also the uh, solid line uh, which is given solid line circle which is given uh, in this uh, figure represents the base circle 
Now, moving on to the uh, next terminology, which is called as the line of action. What do you mean by this line of action? Now, it is common tangent to the base circles of mating gear. So, you can see you are having uh, a base circle which is uh, shown over here. And uh, the next base circle for the other gear is uh, can be traced uh, here. Now, if you draw a common tangent, if you draw a common tangent, you can clearly see, you can draw a common tangent and that is represented by this pressure line which is written over here. That is referred to as the line of action. So, the common tangent to the base circle is called as the line of action and you can see the force, the force that is going to be transmitted from first gear to the second gear passes through this line of action. Okay, now that is called as line of action. Now, the next terminology is the pressure angle. Pressure angle. Now, you can see, uh, as we have seen uh, from the previous uh, terminologies, you have seen the, the pitch circle. So, this dotted and this uh, long short line represents the pitch circle. Okay, pitch circle. Now, that is for the first gear. And this long short long short long line represents the pitch circle for the second gear. Now the common tangent to that. Now this line represents the common tangent. This line represents the common tangent to the two base circles, the two pitch circles. Okay. And the angle that the line of action, so this is the line of action, this is the line of action that makes with the uh, common tangent of the pitch circle is called as pressure angle and this is termed as alpha which is represented as alpha which is called as a pressure angle okay now one more important definition is the backlash okay backlash what do you mean by backlash so it is the difference between the tooth space and the tooth thickness so assume that you are having a tooth of involute profile okay involute profile and you are having some tooth space so this represents uh, the tooth space so you are having tooth so you can see that this tooth thickness should go inside the tooth space so it cannot have a same dimension okay that cause interference and it cause it affects the performance of the gear so the tooth space will be always slightly larger than the tooth thickness okay now the difference between these two is called as backlash that is called as backlash okay now we will see some of the other uh, terminologies uh, you can see the arc of contact now the arc of the pitch circle now you can see this represents the pitch circle the pitch circle the arc of the pitch circle through which the tooth moves from the beginning to the end of the contact so from the beginning of the tooth engagement to the end of tooth disengagement okay the arc traced in the pitch circle by the pitch circle is called as arc of contact and the angle corresponding to that is called as angle of contact angle of contact now the next one is called as arc of approach so the arc traced by the pitch circle the arc of the pitch circle through which a tooth moves from its beginning of contact from its beginning of contact to the pitch circle to the pitch circle now this is represented as arc of approach and the angle subtended is called as angle of approach okay now the next terminology is the arc of recess okay now the arc of pitch circle through which a tooth moves from the contact okay tooth moves from the contact at the pitch point at the pitch point so you have the arc which is being traced from the pitch point to the tooth disengagement now that is called as arc of recess and the angle subtended at the center is called as angle of recess okay now contact ratio you have another terminology the number of pairs of teeth that are simultaneously engaged is called as contact ratio so if you have more than uh, one teeth which is being engaged okay or more than two one teeth which is being engaged simultaneously then they are called as contact ratio usually for derivation purpose and uh, you assume that only one tooth is engaged in the engaged position 
okay and the remaining two, two terminologies which i have addressed face width and profile this you can clearly understand from the definitions which are provided in the textbook or in the slide now we are going to discuss about the different gear trains that are being commonly used uh, in this simple gear train you can see it is used for distant power transmission uh, now you will be having one uh, driving gear at this location and also another driven gear at this location and in between you may be having some idler gears now the number of uh, intermediate gears used in between determines the distance between the power transmission and with this uh, you can obtain the equation for transmission ratio so the equation for transmission ratio is given over here so you can write the velocity ratio for each uh, gear system and you can multiply the same and you can obtain finally the power transmission equation so power transmission ratio equation can be uh, obtained using this relationship now coming to the compound gear trains now what is the difference between the simple gear train and compound gear train now you can see you are having a driver gear at gear a and it is named as gear a and also you are having the final driven gear which is denoted as gear d so as you can see this gear a and gear b are coupled and on the same shaft where you have the gear B, you are having the gear C, which you can see in this uh, animation. And also from gear C, power is getting transmitted to gear D. Now you can see in this case, the intermediate gears, uh, gear B and gear C are located on the same shaft. So that is a basic difference. And you can obtain the uh, basic relationship for the transmission ratio, uh, which is equal to N1 by N4. Uh, and that can be easily obtained. Okay, so in this, uh, you can see uh, the rpm of gear b and gear c are going to be same now moving on to the uh, reverted gear train system now if you see the reverted gear train system now this represents the reverted gear train and you can see it looks almost identical to the compound gear train now what is the difference between this uh, compound gear train and reverted gear train as you can see uh, you can mark the driver so this represents the driver and this represents the driven now in between you are having the idler gears now this as well as this represents these two gears represents the idler gears which are mounted on the same shaft similar to the compound gear train now the difference as you can see is uh, the direction of rotation of this driver as well as the driven will be in the same direction and also they lie in line okay along the same line okay so you can see the axis of the driver as well as the axis of the driven is going to coincide now if you want to place an object in between this space or if you want to uh, just if you need to have some deviation to the path of the power transmission you can go for this gear train and you can place some simple objects in the space which is obtained over here okay now these reverted gear trains are generally used in watches and other small components where space is a major constraint to the <clears throat> next type of uh, gear train which is called as a epicyclic gear train now you can see in this case you are having two gears which is called as gear 1 now the first gear is called as gear 1 and the second one you can call this as gear 2 now in between you are having some link which is going to connect these two gears so this represents the link now how it is going to work now assume the case your link is fixed and now it is not allowed to move in that case this is going to represent a simple gear train again you can see you are having gear 1 which access the driver and gear 2 access the driven and this uh, since the link is not allowed to move you can see this is going to the driver is going to uh, rotate the driven uh, gear now assume the case if the link is allowed to rotate now what happens in that case if the link is allowed to rotate you can clearly see that you are uh, gear 1 is going to revolve around this gear 2 
So that is why we have the term which is called as epicyclic gear train or it is also called as planetary gear system. Now these uh, gear train systems are usually seen in differentials. These are most commonly used in differentials. And also the velocity ratio which you can obtain from this epicyclic gear train is very high. Now these are the advantages that is associated with this epicyclic gear train. This is uh, something which is called as interference and undercutting. Now let us see, uh, we, will, we will recollect what we have learned from the previous uh, slide. So we can see that your teeth is going to have an invalid profile over this location right now what do you mean by this invalid profile you are having a base circle now over which you are having some string which is being wounded on okay wounded over so uh, if you hold the tip of the string and if you are going to unwind the path traced by this uh, string is called as an invalid profile so from the base circle okay so that is what we have seen uh, the definition of invalid profile okay now, as you can see in some cases, now in this figure, you can see the base circle is represented by this line, which is shown over here. Okay, so this represents the base circle. Now, in some cases, uh, we are going to have uh, the didendum circle that will be placed below this base circle. Okay, so the didendum circle is represented by this new line and it may go sometimes below this base circle. Now, as you can see, the invalid profile continues and you can see it is extended till the didendum circle where the uh, it is a circle made by the root of the uh, teeth. Okay. Now, as you can see, since the base circle is lying above the didendum circle, the path below the base circle, that means this sound will not be having an invalid profile. So, that will be having a non-invalid profile. Now, you can see another a gear is going to mate with this gear that means the invalid portion of the mating gear is going to uh, interact with the non-invalid portion okay so there is a mismatch between the two profiles so one gear tooth will be having the invalid profile and the other one will be having a non-invalid portion now there will be an interaction between these two and this is called as interference so that is termed as interference now that can result in excessive wear, vibration as well as jamming of the gear tooth. Now you can eliminate this interference. Now how to eliminate this? You can see a small amount of material is being removed at this location where interference occurs. Now this process is called as undercutting. So that is given as undercutting. Now this is going to solve the issue of interference but as you can see since you are removing the material from the root of the gear tooth and since that section is going to be the critical se section when you consider the gear tooth now that is going to uh, weaken the strength of the tooth that, so that is one of the disadvantage that is going to be associated with this undercutting phenomenon.